This is Eddie Hitchens with EnergeticCity.ca, and this is the Community Roundup brought to you by Brad's Furniture and Appliances. There is a tackling, a smattering of activity going on here at the Baldonna Elementary School Gymnasium. We're at the Baldonna Elementary uh, Entrepreneur Fair. We're joined here by a teacher at Baldonna, uh, Elaine McEckham. Elaine, nice to see you. Um, so could you just describe uh, what... Uh, the kids are doing here today? The kids are selling products that they have made. Uh, they've done market research. They have advertised. They have budgeted. They have taken out loans. They've paid their loans back. Um, and they're just having a really good time learning how to run a business. Okay, so you said this, you know, this was called, the program that uh, you guys learned from was called Power Play. Can you describe to the viewers uh, what that is about? Um, Power Play Young Entrepreneurs is a BC education product. It was actually invented by a teacher in the Lower Mainland. Um, but his whole purpose in life is to help kids understand that they can be business owners and that, you know, they could be the kinds of people who can solve 21st century problems by starting up their own businesses that fill a need of some kind. Okay, so as, as I had mentioned to you before, uh, as a kid, we didn't, we learned about state capitals yeah. or <laughs> provincial capitals. That's we right, learned about right. other things. I didn't learn it about anything about entrepreneurship or running my own business until I started uh, junior achievement. I think it was in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. So can you explain the similar differences between power play and what junior achievement would be? I think the similarities are that with junior achievement, you're responsible for creating something and selling something. Um, same with Young Entrepreneur Fair, but this kind of goes deeper into the logistics of owning a business, like getting a loan, signing a contract, um, making business plan goals, donating to charity. So it's really important that all the kids donate at least 10% of their funds, that their profits to charity. So they're donating to the Baldonna Square Playground or the SPCA or the BC Children's Hospital. Okay, so uh, what was the inspiration behind Putting together this event, I understand and it was a very important anniversary for the school. Yeah, it's our 100th anniversary this year. So Baldonnel School has been around for 100 years. This building has been around for 40 years. I actually, I went to this school in 1983. We had the field trip of walking here from the airport school. Very exciting. Okay, I guess things have certainly changed. Yeah, now. yeah, buses, okay. for example, have been invented. <laughs> Well, you spoke to me when we last spoke about the kids visiting the dry ice business within town. Ah, yeah. And uh, could you just tell me what, what it was like for them to go see that experience, what they took out of that? Yeah, so we had a young entrepreneur who actually is a graduate of Baldonna School, and he has his own dry ice um, company. So he, he has his own dry ice company, and he came in and he talked to the kids about what it was like to do science fair here when he was a kid. And then you go up, be an adult, and be like, wow, you know what? My, my experiences in the oil and gas field, they need dry ice to clean the products, but that doesn't exist right now. So he invented a company to clean oil field stuff with dry ice. And then he came and talked to the kids about what it was like to be a kid in school, muck around with science fair, and then grow up and be like, hey, I, I can be a business person. I have that ability. So... He just kind of sparked that for us. Uh, okay, so um, obviously they learned about uh, certain aspects like about how to manage money, how to budget, how to come up with a business plan, and things like that. Yeah. Um, what you think? What skill? All the skills that they learned in terms of putting together these products that they're gonna take with them going forward. Oh man, some of the products like just counting back money. I mean, that's a that's a project in itself, counting back money. And some of the kids are better at it than others, but like. Hustling for sales, you know, like that's a big deal. All of our really shy, introverted kids have to hustle for sales. But like even the learning of new technology, we had kids using two-part epoxy, CNC cutters. We had kids, you know, building things with wood, like bird feeders, bird houses, picture frames with their parents. We had kids making toy cars, um, resin jewelry, like just tons of new skills were made that they can go out into the world with. I know that River wants to, like, continue to sell things on Etsy after this. And Morgan wants to sell things, you know, as a, like, a, at farmer's markets and stuff still. So. Well, in the age of social media, it's very critical that, you know, you can go out and sell these products to other people from outside the screen. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's a, it, it gives a new 
terms of the meeting pocket money. Right, no kidding. And we invited the public to this too, right? So it's not just an in-house affair now. Everybody gets to come to okay, it. Okay, so um, from the beginning of this project to the end, how much development did you see out of the children as they moved forward with this project? You know, it's funny. We had some kids that had behavior kinds of needs, and they really leaned into this project and felt so empowered to be their own bosses. And so we didn't see a lot of behavior from some of the kids that normally are just not into school. And the kids who are into school really extended the level of their thinking and their willingness to try new hard things and lean into the challenge of being their own boss because they had to decide what they were going to sell and how but they were going to so sell. You saw a lot more focus on assumptions. Who's the boot? Say it again. Yeah, so a lot more focus on assumptions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They they focused on their interests. Uh, okay. And 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 what and one of the kind of, kind of products that are available here at the Entrepreneurial Trail today. The paracord bracelets, bookmarks, jewelry, accessories, bird feeders, bird houses, bird seed, catnip toys. Um, we've got pencil toppers, we've got bubbly soap, bath salts, bath bombs. What else do we have? We've got cups with stickers, corn plants, wooden toys. Um, just take, we had slime. They sold out in the first 25 minutes. We've got stress balls. We got yeet rockets, which kids love. So they just yeet. I didn't know that was a word until they started doing these things. Um, yeah. Hair clips. We've got um, key tags, lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Okay, yeah. well, you, you touched on it earlier. Part of this is going towards charitable causes. Explain which charitable causes it's going to and why do the children pick those causes? Three charitable causes. One's the BC Children's Hospital. One is the SPCA because nobody likes to see kids or animals suffering. But the other one is the Baldonnell School Playground. Now, I don't know if people know this, but like when new schools like Aaron Roberts got built, the government gave them all the money for their new playground. Baldonnell's 100th birthday, and we're still fundraising for playgrounds here because we've got to pay for it out of our little tiny community. So maybe, maybe if the kids do their part to help build a new playground, the the community and the government can like swing some money our way too because our kids would love to play on some new equipment not you know the stuff that i played on in 1983. Uh, all right that's all the questions i have elaine thank you very much for the time very good to see you right on Once again this has been edward hitchens with the community roundup for energeticcity.ca brought to you by brad's furniture and appliances